Hi class, this is Sir Alex Basco and welcome to our lesson in General Chemistry 2. We are continuing our discussion with chemical equilibrium as we discuss uh, lesson 11.2 which is all about the equilibrium constant Kp. So today we are learning how to measure Kp and how is it different from our previous discussion where we discussed the equilibrium constant Kc. So before we head on and discussing all about KP, let's head on to the goals of our lessons today. So for us, uh, at the end of this lesson, I want everyone to be able to explain again the chemical equilibrium in terms of uh, the reaction rates of the forward and the reverse reaction. Uh, we sometimes use uh, backwards as well when we talk about reverse reaction. We've talked about this from our previous discussion, so we're just going to iterate. Oh, we're just going to repeat it today a little bit to clear up or to remind ourselves on what equilib uh, chemical equilibrium is. As well as be able to ca uh, calculate the equilibrium constant in terms of pressure. We've talked about concentration already. Today we are talking about the pressure part of the reactants or products in an equilibrium mixture. So let's uh, head on and talk about the difference between Kc and Kp. But before that, let's remind ourselves what is chemical equilibrium. Uh, chemical equilibrium is where the reactions are at equilibrium. What, the, what we mean by that is a reaction is at equilibrium when the forward and the reverse reaction happens at the same rate. So for example, you have a chemical equation wherein you have your reactants going to your products and then it reverses from products back to reactants. Reactants to product is usually the forward uh, reaction while the products going back to the reactants are the reverse reaction or the backwards reaction. What do we mean by equilibrium is when the rate or meaning the speed on how fast the reactants are going into the reaction or proceeding to the reaction, turning them from reactants to products, is the same rate or the same speed wherein the products are returning to their original form as a reactants. So it's going back and forth at the same rate. What do we mean also by chemical equilibrium is when the forward and the reverse constants uh, because uh, the Kf, uh, there is Kf and Kb, uh, for example, if the chemical uh, reaction is not, uh, let's say, it's not at equilibrium, uh, it, it's kind of like different from here where in the forward and the reverse reaction is not happening at the same rate. So it could be that the forward is faster or the reverse is much faster, meaning one or the, either the product or the, rea uh, or the reactant are being favored. What that also entails is that there is a uh, there is a equilibrium constant for forward and reverse reaction, and that's why we write F and B. That's the that's just what it is. No, uh, the uh, equilibrium constant for forward, and there's an equilibrium constant going backward. But when the chemical reaction is at equilibrium, what that just means also well is that the Kf and the Kb or the equilibrium constant as the reaction proceeds forward and as the reaction proceeds backward is equal. And that makes the reaction rate also equal. Another thing about uh, reaction being at equilibrium is that the concentrations of the reactions are constant. So even though the um, one thing that I want you guys to know about when we talk about equilibrium is that the reverse or the reaction has not stopped, no? It's going back and forth, no? It's kind of like a circle, if you think of it. The reactants proceeding as products, at the same time the products are going back as a reactants. What that means then is that the concentrations of the reactions are constant. So I also I just want you guys to remember that we've discussed that now uh, when we talk about Kc, uh, we measure Kc and remember that when the uh, reaction is at equilibrium, the concentrations should be constant. So in the end, equilibrium constant Kc is basically the ratio of the concentrations at equilibrium at certain temperature. We use the sub, uh, sub letter C uh, to denote equilibrium constant Kc 
to mean concentration. So, you use smaller concentration of the species. No? And, um, so, we've discussed this. Just a little bit review. Now, let's talk about how is it different from KP. So, when reaction components are in gas form, so meaning we do not deal with liquids and solids. In this case, we are dealing with gases we can express the equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressure. Partial pressure is basically the pressure that the gas exerts. It's the, you can think of it as a vapor pressure, no? Uh, remember the vapor pressure? It's uh, the gases, it's the force or the pressure that the gases exerts on the container. You can think of this reaction being inside a container and since they have gases, they exert some form of pressure as gases they're pushing onto the container. So partial pressure basically means it's uh, the pressure exerted by one of the species uh, along the total pressure exerted by all the gas species present in the reaction. So for example, you have your chemical equation here, <clears throat> wherein in the beginning you have your reactants, you have your uh, a and you have your B and they're in gas form. So let's, we're still talking about the beginning. We're in, let's think about it in a way that we don't, we still do not have any uh, products, no? So what does this mean? What does this mean is that there is a pressure, there's a total pressure exerted by A and B. And A exerts a partial pressure and B exerts also another partial pressure at the start. And when we combine them together, the total pressure, there is a total pressure exerted by both. So when we are solving for Kp, we are looking at the partial pressures for each species. So when we combine these two in a container and then they suddenly proceed in a <coughs> to make a product, and then in the end, the product also goes back to reactants. So let's think of this equation now as being at equilibrium. So there is a forward and there's a backward reaction happening at the same rate because we know at equilibrium, they should happen at the same rate. So what that means is now there's a total pressure exerted by four of these species. There's a part, there's a pressure exerted by A, B, C, and D. And the, ex, uh, and the pressure exerted by A, B, C, and D are called the partial pressure. And when you add all of those pressures, it's called the total pressure present in the container. I hope that it's clear. So that's basically it. Partial pressure is the pressure exerted by the gas species or the chemical present in the chemical equation. So there's the partial pressure exerted by A. There's the partial pressure exerted by B, the same for C and D. In, uh, you can imagine again this uh, the reaction is happening in a container so if we know these partial pressures exerted by each of these species or at least by the species that are gases in the reaction therefore we can actually solve for another equilibrium constant using that partial pressure and we call that kp and the equation that we have to use is a little similar in Kc, but instead of using chemical concentration, we're in, we use brackets. Uh, when we talk about concentration in chemistry, we usually use brackets though. But in this case, we do not use bracket. We use parentheses and the uh, letter P to denote the partial pressure exerted by the species. So as you can see here, you basically have the partial pressure exerted by the products divided by the partial pressures exerted by the reactants. So you take uh, the partial pressure of one of the product species, raise it by some coefficient. This coefficient is basically the coefficient of the stoichiometry that you found in the chemical equation. So the balancing coefficient. So take the partial pressure if they are known, and then raise it, uh, or the partial pressure of that species if they are known, and then raise it to their coefficients. And that's what you want to do in order for you to find Kp. There's something, though, that I want you guys to remember when we are doing this. Things to remember, one is that the reaction should be balanced, no? So if you are making a if you are solving for Kp, make sure that the chemical equation that you're looking at is balanced. Otherwise, you will be you will solve for a wrong Kp. 
Again, just make sure that the chemical equation is balanced. Another thing, since we are talking about partial pressure in terms of gases, we do not have to include solids and liquids. <coughs> and even aqueous solutions because they are not gas. No? They are uh, pure solids and pure liquids and we usually just write one. So for example, let's take A and change this as, uh, let's think about it. Uh, let's put a pen. So let's say if A is suddenly a liquid, no? what happens in here is that this part right here will be removed and just becomes one no it's not l that's one so what does this means is that that's the concentration that we have to denote in order to solve for kb in case that this is either liquid or even solid so basically what i'm trying to say is you do not want to include solids or liquids when you are solving for B. That's why this uh, part right here is important to identify whether they're gas, solid, or liquid, or even aqueous solution. Because otherwise, you will solve for Kp that is wrong. Again, you just have to include gases. Next thing, Kp, like Kc, do not have any units. And lastly, we have to use the same units of pressure for all the species. So what does that mean is you either use atmospheric pressure, which is a unit of pressure, or another unit of pressure called VAR. No? So for example, you were given all the partial pressures and some of them are in ATM and some of them are in VAR. You have to make sure that uh, you change one. Usually we use ATM, that's one of the easiest, it's one of the most standard units that we can use. But if, for example, the problem tells you to use bar, then change some of the ATM pressure into bar. Again, just remember you have to use the same unit for the pressure. So all the gases here should be written in terms of either ATM or bar or whatever other units of pressure there is. But these are the two most common units of pressure. So I hope that is clear. I hope that uh, everyone understands now what is KP. Um, if you guys have any questions about that, you can message me. Now let's talk about converting gas concentrations to pressure. So at the beginning of our discussion, we were mostly talking about concentrations, molar concentrations, no? Uh, now we are talking about pressure. Uh, one great thing though is that we can actually use the gas con concentrations to measure the pressure. What does that mean is that uh, case in KC, we use uh, gas concentrations, but in KP, we have to use pressure. But what if the problem wants you to solve for pressure, but they give you the gas concentrations? That is okay, because we can find the pressure using the gas concentration. How we can do that? It's basically the use of what we call the ideal gas equation or the ideal gas law. So we can again convert gas concentrations to partial pressure via the use of ideal gas law. We do not have, uh, we haven't had any discussions about ideal gas law. I'm not sure if we discuss it in general chemistry one, but this is the equation for the ideal gas law. We have EV is equals to NRT. Um, I usually use just pervnert to remember what the ideal gas law is. Ideal gas law is pervnert. So basically you have the pressure volume is equal to the number of molecules multiplied by R, which is a universal gas constant, multiplied by temperature. Uh, in order for us to solve for gas, uh, to convert for gas concentrations, we have to rearrange these equations towards to pressure is equals to the moles or basically we just have to divide both sides to V. If you divide this to V, the volume both cancels and then if you divide this to V and then separate the N and V, so we actually got, sorry about that sound, we ended up having these equations wherein you have P is equals to the number of molecules of gases divided by the volume and multiplied by universal gas or universal uh, gas constants R and 
multiplied by temperature. So there is a whole lot of equation that you have to do in order to derive on how to be able to convert gas concentrations to partial pressure. We're not going to do that. I'm not going to show you how to do it. It's a little tedious. So just remember that we got the next equation that I'm going to show you from these two, from this equation. No? And the equation that you have to use is this. Kp is equals to the uh, Kc multiplied by Rt raised to some um, number of molecules. So what I'm trying to say is we got this equation right here from this equation. Again, I'm not going to show you how to do it, how we derive this equation from here. It's a little tedious and it's really not that important to understand yet. Uh, but uh, make, uh, we can convert gas concentrations from pressure using ideal gas law um, via the use of this equation that we derive from gas law. So if you have a problem asking you to convert a gas concentration to partial pressure or vice versa, because you can actually use this to measure Kp if they give you the Kc or to measure Kc if they give you the Kp. And you can use this now. Just remember this equation when you want to convert gas concentration to pressure. Just where Kr is the universal gas constant. Uh, there's a lot of... The, 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 basically, this is constant. You just have to look at the internet, the value of R. Or a lot of times, or a lot of times, it is given in the problem. It is if it is not given in the problem, just look at it in the internet. It's there. Uh, R is a again, it's a constant. It's not changing. Uh, it only changes depending on the unit that you have to use. Like again, what I mean by that is, if the equation, if the um, units of gases that you're dealing with it at, is atmosphere, then use the R where the R, uh, the unit for R has atmosphere. If the uh, units for gases, gas pressure in the problem are in bar, then use the R constant wherein the unit is in R. Okay, so dun lang siya mag -iiba, yung units niya. And of course, the values changes, but they're all basically equal to each other. It's just different because you're diff using different units, okay? Again, R, you just have to look at the internet, the value of the R that you have to use. T is the temperature uh, in the reaction. N is the number of moles of the reaction. And delta, since it's a delta N, it's basically the mole of gas product minus the mole of gas reactant. So you have to measure the delta N, or N is basically the number of molecules in the reaction. No? In order to solve for delta N, you take the number of molecules of gas products minus it to the number of molecules in the gas reactant. I'm going to show you later on how to do this. But that's basically what Kp is all about. Kp is basically taking the gas, uh, partial gas pressure of each of the species in the reaction and using that to measure Kp. Another thing is you can actually take the gas concentrations of the reaction in order to solve for Kp. Okay, so having said that, I hope everything is clear about Kp. Let's try some sample problem. So let's begin with our first problem. Um, let me just take my pen here. Okay, so find the Kp for the evaluating gas phase reaction with a given species partial pressures at temperature T. So this is our chemical equation right here where you have 2 and 205 so 2 moles of N205 in gas form. And it decomposes to oxygen gas plus uh, nitrogen. Yeah, nitrite, maybe this is a nitrite term, NO2, four molecules of NO2. And you have first have to take note is the equation balance, and the equation is actually balanced because we have 10 molecules of oxygen here because 5 multiplied by 2, that's 10. So we have 2 uh, oxygen here plus 8 uh, oxygen here that gives you 10, and then you have 4N here, and that gives you 4N here. The equation as we know it is balanced. Another thing that you have to note, everything is in gas form, so everything matters in solving for Kp because we have to take the partial pressure of each of these 
h and n is these fishes. Now let's solve for kt. How are we going to do that? So basically, let's first write our given. Um, I think, mm, yeah, let's just skip that because this is basically our given already. So for this problem, this is already our given. They gave us the partial pressure for each of these species, wherein N2O5 has a partial pressure of 2, O2 has a partial pressure of O2, 0.296, and NO2 has a partial pressure of L, 1.70. And as you can see, we used the units ATM in these partial pressures. So what is being asked of us is find the KT. So find the equilibrium constant of the partial pressures on this uh, balanced chemical equation or in this equilibrium, uh, chemical equilibrium. The formula that you have to use is basically KP. So you have to use capital K. So KP is equals to in this case you have uh, C so this is A B C and then you have this as A B C so you have to have a partial pressure of B raised to some B multiplied by the partial pressure of C multiplied some C divided by some partial pressure of A multiplied by B. Okay, so let's solve this problem. Solution. So using the formula, you just have to substitute or in the PB, so you have O, so partial pressure of O, uh, the coefficient of O is 1, so that's basically raised to 1. And then the partial pressure of C, which is NO2, raised to its coefficient 4, divided by the partial pressure of A, which is N2O5, raised to some coefficient, which is 2. Substituting the value, you get NO2 as 0 0.296 multiplied by the partial pressure of into uh, NO2 or N, N2O, uh, yeah, NO2, sorry, NO2 is 1.70 raised to 4 divided by the partial pressure of N2O5, which is 2.00 raised to some 2. And just using the calculator, you would get 0 0.618. So that is the equilibrium constant of the partial pressure for this chemical equation. Again, there's no unit necessary for KP, so this is your answer. Okay, so I hope that is clear. It's quite easy. It's very similar to the concentration, but instead of using concentrations, you are using partial pressure. Next, let's have this sample problem. Find the KP at 400 Kelvin, so they gave us the temperature for the given reversible reaction in 2 in gas form plus 3 moles of hydrogen or dihydrogen in gas form it giving us NH3 2 NH3 2 moles of NH3 in gas form if Kc for this reaction is 4.5 times 10 raised to 4 at the same temperature use the units of par for partial pressure okay so let's write our given So the first given that they gave us is they gave us a temperature of 400 Kelvin. And they gave us this reversible reaction and the, rever and the equilibrium constant of the concentrations of these uh, chemical equilibrium is 4.5 times 10 raised to 4. And then what they're asking us is basically the KP. So, tinatanong sa atin, ano yung KP using this information? So, basically, they give you the KC, they give you the temperature, they're looking for KP. So, basically, now, what they're asking you is use the formula for conversion of the gas concentration to partial pressure. And the formula for that is uh, the one that I already showed you earlier. That's basically KP equals to Kc 
multiplied by uh, the uh, R, uh, R gas constant R, a universal gas constant R, multiply the temperature and delta N. Okay, solution. So what we want to do first is to solve for this problem. We again we have to use this relationship right here. What we're gonna do first is first let's try to find delta n. No, let's, we know that delta n is equals to the mole of gas product. minus the mole of gas reactants. So this gives us delta N is equals to, let's look at our products. So we only have two moles of our product. Okay, so we have two moles of NH3. So that gives us Two moles of NH3 minus the moles of gas reactants. So we have one mole of N2 plus three moles of H2. So what that means is basically two minus one plus. So that gives us 2 minus 4, that is equals to negative 2. So now we know the value of our delta n. Let's plug in the number to solve for <coughs> uh, kp. So number 2, let's solve for kp, which is equals to kc multiplied by some the universal gas constant R multiplied by temperature multiplied by or raised to some delta N. We know that the Kc is 4.5 times 10 raised to fourth. And now let's look at R. Since we are using for bar, not ATM, no? It's uh, asking us to use the units of bar for partial pressure. The R Okay, so this is right here. R at bar. So yung R natin when we use bar is actually equal to 0 0.0813 or 8314 liters per bar divided by K per mole. Kelvins for mole. Okay, that is the R, that is the value of R when we are solving for uh, Kp in terms of, or the partial pressure in terms of bar. So that's basically 0 0.08314 multiplied by Kelvin, which is 400, okay, let's edit this a little bit. Zero point zero eight three one four. So it's a bar K per mole multiplied by some temperature, which is four hundred Kelvin, raised to negative two. Okay, so plugging in that number, you cancel the K here. Again, we don't really need to use the units because there's no units for KP in a man. Just plugging in your numbers, you will get your, your value is actually equal to 41. Okay, so that is the uh, equilibrium constant for the partial pressure of this chemical equation right here uh, in terms of bar. No? So our units are in bar. If it's looking for atmosphere, here are, you would have a different answer because uh, it's in units of atmosphere because your R would be equal to 8.3145 five, um, yeah, 5 joules per Kelvin mole. 
So if they ask you to use the units of ATM for partial pressure, then this is the units that we have to use, or this is the value of R that we have to use. Since it's asking us for bar, we use this, no? As you can see, uh, this is a, these two are basically equal. It's just it's using a different unit, but they are equal. But it will give you, of course, a different answer here. I hope that is clear uh, about the conversion of the gas concentrations. After they give you the KC, uh, you can again use uh, this formula right here uh, to solve for KT. So this formula, we got it from the ideal gas. Next, let's look at our sample problem three. Consider the equilibrium reaction for the decomposition of water, wherein you have two moles of H2O, which are which is liquid, and it decomposes to two moles of hydrogen gas plus one mole of oxygen gas. Assume that, uh, assume that initially there is no hydrogen or oxygen gas present. So the beginning of the reaction, we only have pure water. At the reaction, uh, as the reaction proceeds to equilibrium, however, the total pressure increases by 2.1 atmosphere. Based on this information, what is Kt for the reaction? Okay, so basically, ang binigay lang sa atin na given is the total pressure. And according to here, we have a total pressure of 2.10 or 2.1 atmosphere. So, tinatan na sa atin, what is the Kt? So, what is the equilibrium constant Kt for this reaction? So, how are we going to solve this? Okay, so to solve this problem, we have to visualize what is happening. Uh, and in order for us to help visualize what is happening, we have to use what we call ice table. So, ano ba yung ice table? Ice table is basically a table in which we can organize and visualize the concentration information given to us and the equal, uh, given to us, um, in the equilibrium problem. So using the ice table, we can visualize what is happening in the equilibrium of this reaction right here. Ice table um, basically means I stands for initial, C stands for the change, and E is for the equilibrium. So how are we going to solve this? So basically you have to create a table. So let's begin. So this is our ice table right here. So let's write our equation. So on the equation natin. So we begin with 2H2O, which is in liquid. And it reacts to basically 2 moles of H2, which is in gas form and one mole of oxygen in gas form. So that's basically the equation. Okay, so how are we going to use the ice table? So you just have to write your ice table, the initial, the change, and the equilibrium. Okay, so when we talk about initial, uh, initially, ano ba yung, uh, ang sinasabi is, ano yung, uh, pressure nila, you can use concentration or pressure in ice table, okay? But since we are using, uh, measuring for Kp, we're gonna use, uh, we are going to use uh, in terms of partial pressure. Okay, so according to the problem, assume that initially, so you have your keyword there initially, there is no hydrogen or oxygen gas present. So basically during the initial part of our uh, reaction, we only have pure 
Hi, uh, water. We only have pure H2O. Okay, so what does that mean is we have some atmosphere in, uh, some atmospheric pressure in liquid. But remember, this is in liquid. So uh, what does that mean is we do not care for liquid. We only care for gases. So we're just going to do is basically write in A here because we're not going to use this anyway. But this is an important information here. There is no hydrogen or oxygen gas present initially. So the initial part of our chemical equation, we do not have any uh, pressure for hydrogen and oxygen. So that gives us zero atmosphere and zero atmosphere initially. And then we have to look at the change, no? So what do we mean by change? So as the reaction proceeds, what happens is this happens. So from H2O, we finally have uh, H2 and O2. What does that mean? Again, this is Na. We do not care about Na. Okay, so as the chemical equation, or the chemical reaction proceeds, uh, the two from two moles of H2O, uh, we start to get some partial pressure of H2 and some partial pressure of O2. So what we're going to do is we can actually use the coefficients to identify the partial pressure that is needed. Since we do not have the value of partial pressure, we have to use X. So we finally have some x value of atmosphere and x value of atmosphere for both but the difference is that uh, we since we have two concentration here two coefficients what we're gonna do is basically this is add we're gonna add two and we're gonna add one so you have some we got this number from their coefficient so we added so as the reaction changes, what happens is from 2 moles of H2O that we do not care because it's a liquid, we finally have some X atmospheric pressure for hydrogen and some X atmospheric pressure for oxygen. And the thing is, uh, there is twice as much hydrogen from oxygen. We know that because of the coefficient of the hydrogen here. What does that mean is we have some 2x atmosphere and some x atmosphere. And then when we reach the equilibrium, that basically tells us that we have some 2x and some x atmosphere in this uh, chemical equilibrium. Okay, so the reason for we got this is basically this. So we have 0 at the beginning plus 2x at the change. So that gives us 2x. 0 plus 2x is 2x. 0 plus x is equals to 1x. So ipag-add nyo lang yung dalawa. Or if you have to minus it, kung nabawasan. So what does, this mean? what does this mean is that if initially they gave you some values for here and then at the change they give you some values then you just have to measure this so if kumbuma ba yung value does it change from the initial then you have to minus it but the masha you just have to add this okay so having used the ice uh, table now we can look at the uh, balance equation uh, okay <clears throat> okay so at this point so what are we going to do now what we're going to do is use Dalton's law for the next part. So after you use the ice table, you have to use Dalton's law to figure out, to find out the partial pressure, to find the partial pressure for H2 and the partial pressure for uh, o2. So how are we going to do that? Dalton's law is basically the total pressure is basically equals to the pressure A plus pressure B plus partial pressure C plus partial pressure D blah blah blah. Since in this problem the only partial pressure that we care about is the ones that are gases. 
So basically, we uh, the only partial pressure that we care about is the pH2 plus pH or PO2. Okay, again, uh, pH2 and PO2 lang kasi uh, H2O is in liquid. We do not care in liquid, we only care uh, the ones that are in gases. Okay, so next, what are we going to do? The total is basically equal to we know that the partial pressure for H2 is 2x and the partial pressure for O2 is x so P total is equals to 3x we know that our P total is 2.10 atmosphere 2.10 atmosphere so 3x is equals to 2.10 atmosphere divide both sides by 3 and the value of x is equals to 0 0.70 atmosphere okay so after solving for the value of x so we have to use by uh, use Dalton's law to find the x we have to substitute this x for the value of pH so find partial pressure for pH2 and PO2. pH2 has a partial pressure of 2x, which means it's 2 multiplied by 0 0.70 atmosphere, which means our pH2 is 1.40 atmosphere and our PO2 is equals to X which basically means our PO2 is 0 0.70 atmosphere okay so now we know the value for pH2 and PO2 next part solve for KP and we can solve for Kp because we know the values of the partial pressure for the species that we need in order to solve for Kp because our Kp is only determinant uh, from H2 and O2. So that's basically P H2 raised to some 2 multiplied by PO2 raised to 1 divided by Again, remember, for a liquid, the concentrations that we have to use is basically 1. Okay, so that gives us basically 1.40 raised to 2 multiplied by 0 0.70 divided by 1. And our Kp is equal to 1.37. So that is our value for Kp, 1.37. So we were able to get uh, our Kp from uh, the information that is only given from the total atmospheric pressure. So the total atmospheric pressure uh, is 2.10 atmosphere. And we know that this total uh, atmospheric pressure is only influenced by gases because it's gas pressure, no? And the only gases in our equation is the hydrogen and the oxygen. So in order for us to get the partial pressures of H2 and O2, which we need in order to solve for Kp, we have to use the ice table. Ice table is we have to tabulate the initial, the change, and the equilibrium. So according to the problem, initially we do not have any hydrogen or oxygen. So we have read input zero atmosphere. And as the reaction proceeds, there is some value. No, magkakaroon tayo ng X atmosphere and some X atmosphere for H2 and O2. Ang magiging different lang is to look at the coefficient. So the coefficient, ang mangyari din sa coefficient is we have coefficient of 2 in our H2, meaning we have twice as much H2 to O2. So what does that mean is we also have twice as much partial pressure of uh, hydrogen compared to our O2. That's why we added the 2x there that came from the coefficient. That's why after the 
reaction proceeds from 0 to some value of x, we add it multiplied by 2. So we have 2x atmosphere, and we only have 1 here, so that's 1 times x, so that's 1x atmosphere. Therefore, the equilibrium cost, uh, the equilibrium in the equation is basically the initial uh, plus 2x. So we have to add this, that gives us 2x, and then we have to add this, that gives us x. So this is the uh, values of the partial pressure for H2 and O2, 2x and x. In order to get uh, the value of these two, you have to first find the value of x. And in order for us to find that, you have to use Dalton's law, where in the total pressure is basically equal to the um, partial pressure, the sum of all the partial pressure. And the partial pressure, the only that we need is basically the H2 and O2. That's why P total is equal to the partial pressure of H2 plus the partial pressure of O2. And we know that the partial pressure of H2 is 2x and the partial pressure of O2 is x. And the total pressure is equals to 210 atmospheres. So 2x plus x is equals to 3x and the total pressure is 210. Divide both sides by 3, you will get the value of x. Now you have to substitute this value of x to the total uh, to the partial pressures of H2 and x. We know that in pH2 the total pressure or the partial pressure is 2x. 2 multiplied by x and we know the value of x that gives us 1.40 and substitute the value of x for the partial pressure of O2. Now you are able to find the partial pressure of both gases in our reaction. We can solve for K using the chemical using the kp expression that we learned previously uh, i know this can get tricky because there's a lot of things happening but i hope everything is clear if you guys have any question regarding this problem uh, you guys are free to ask me anytime thank you so much and may you guys have a great